So we've already looked at some special types of graphs, and that's exactly what a tree is, and it's so important it gets its own chapter. So a tree is just a simple graph, and we know simple means no loops, no double edges, etc. It's connected, it's undirected for the most part. Um, well, a regular tree is undirected, yes, with no simple circuits, which means we know what a circuit is, where you can connect from one to the other and back to the beginning. Um, essentially what this means is there is a unique simple path between any two vertices. So say this guy down here and this guy down here, the only way I can get from one to the other is along this path. That's the only way that I could do it. So I have an example of a tree, not a tree, I included two things that would make it not a tree. The first is this guy right here is a circuit, it's a cycle where I can get from here back to here, and that's not okay. And then this guy is also a problem, which makes it not a tree, because this is a path to get to that vertex, but this is a different path to get to that vertex, and we should only have one path from vertex to vertex. So a rooted tree, and the picture, just a heads up, is not a rooted tree yet but it is a tree in which we essentially pick out one vertex to be designated as the root and every other edge is directed away from that root. And we typically put that at the top of the tree. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to choose a random point, one of the vertices that are already on my graph. And then I am going to make a rooted tree out of it. So I'm gonna choose H and from H, I can see that I have four branches and these are directed. When you have a rooted tree, all of these are directed. But what you'll notice about rooted trees is quite often they won't show the direction. So H had I coming off of it and G and F and A. I'm gonna have to move A off to the side. And that pretty much took care of this whole section down here. But now from A, a is going to have some branches off, or just one branch off of it, down to B, and again, that would be directed. And then B branches off into both C and D, again, directed. And then D branches down into E. So this is one way to make the tree that I gave you into a rooted tree. So I could have chosen really any of those vertices. I just chose one that looked to be a little bit more complicated than the others. So this is how I would create a rooted tree. So again, I've taken the root, stuck it at the top, and then everything flows away from there. So let's talk about some of the terminology you might see with rooted trees. Um, I'm just gonna sort of hop around and put a check mark once we've talked about each one. Um, looking at this, this is a rooted tree where A is the root, and A is called a parent because A has two children, and so B and C would both be considered children um, of A, and also B and C would be considered siblings. So just like it works in a normal family, if two vertices have the same parent, they are both children and they are siblings. Ancestor, descendants, same idea. So if I'm looking at A, A has quite a few descendants. A or B and C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, all of those would be descendants, whereas all of those have A as an ancestor. Um, these two you need to make sure you kind of keep straight. So a leaf or an internal vertice, an internal vertice is a vertice that has children. So we could call B or C or G or F or E or D. All of those would be considered internal vertices because they all have children. Whereas all of these little guys at the bottom who don't have children are called leaves. So they are children, but they are also called leaves. The two at the top I save for the end. So a rooted tree is called an m airy tree if every internal vertex has no more than m children. Um, so in this case, the most number of children anybody has is three, so this could be a three airy tree. 
because there, that is the most number of children. It would be a full three-airy tree if I had all of my vertices or had three um, children, essentially, except for the bottom. A binary tree obviously is just a two airy tree and so at most two branches off of each one. So this is not a binary tree but obviously we will look into those in a little bit. There are so so many things that you can know about trees but this is really just an introduction and this is the only section that we're going to cover so it's really just a good introduction before we really go all into trees in combinatorics. Um, so a tree with n vertices has n minus 1 edges is a property and again all of these proofs are in your textbook I'm not going to go through the proofs with you. A full MRE tree, remember a full MRE tree means each um, vertex has m number of children um, with i internal vertices so all of the internal vertices have m children contains m times i plus 1 vertices. So does this make sense? Absolutely, because we got the guy up at the top and then each one of these is going to have, say if it's a three area tree, then each has three and so it certainly makes sense that we would have, you know, whatever in this case three times however many internal vertices there are plus my root up at the top. A full m -airy tree with n vertices has i equal n minus 1 over m internal vertices and l equals m minus 1 times n plus 1 over m leaves. You get the idea. There's a lot of different formulas that you can use. Um, and so I just want to show you one example where you might use one of these formulas so that you don't have to draw a giant tree and try to figure out the answer to the question. So I want to look at an application where we might use some of those formulas we just came up with. Suppose someone starts a chain letter. Each person is asked to send the letter to four other people. Some do and some don't. So again, we're looking at four other people. That will be important. How many people have seen the letter? So this is question one. How many people have seen the letter? So in a graph, because obviously we're going to model this with a graph, what exactly am I looking for if I'm looking for how many people have seen the letter? This would be the number of vertices because that would be the total number of people who've seen the letter including the original sender. It says if no one receives more than one letter that tells me it's a tree and the chain ends after 100 people read it but don't send it on. So people who read it but don't send it on are considered leaves because they don't have any children. So I could draw a tree and that would be ridiculous um, because it would be a four airy tree because each person could send up to four out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the third um, theorem, third part of theorem that we just looked at that had four or sorry three different um, situations and this one says if it has L leaves so I know that it has leaves equals 100 I'm going to use n, and n was the number of vertices, which is exactly what I'm trying to figure out, equals m times l minus 1 over m minus 1. So what's m? Because this is going to be a 4 airy tree, m must be 4. So I'm looking at 4 times 100 minus 1 over 4 minus 1 which gives me 400 minus 1 or 399 divided by 3 which of course is 133. So the answer to the first part of the question is 133. 133 people have seen the letter including the original sender. To determine how many people sent out the letter, so question two, let's switch up colors, how many people sent out the letter, that means people who in terms of the graph have children. So this would be the number of internal vertices is what I'm trying to find. So again, I'm looking at that formula that says I equals L minus one over M minus one. I'm still using the same L and the same M. So L was 100, 100 minus one over M, which was four minus one, which gives me 99 divided by three, 
which gives me 33, so 33 people sent out the letter.